Inspiration Radio Station. Stream us on your cell, laptop, desktop, or tablet at KFMA.com. You want it? You got it. Reality Radio done right. right. No nonsense, real and raw, just like you like it. He's corrupt, he's inexperienced, and he lies. Broadcasting from a broom closet in the Arizona Lotus Studios, it's Beef Vegan Presents. <laughs> Yo, welcome back to the show. It's BTG Presents Live from Rock 12.1 KFMA. Streaming worldwide at KFMA.com on this beautiful Thursday, October 26th. Good morning, Rico. Good morning, friend. And good morning, Tucson. Now, weirdo should be making her way in through uh, the studio sometime this morning. She was at uh, Rialto last night for the Who and Blind Channel. Blind Channel, who were stealing the show last night and did a fantastic job, is what I've been, I'm hearing and seeing on social media, mm-hmm. will be our in-studio guest today for the podcast Ooh. broadcast, doing a live performance and all that. Very excited about this band. Very buzzworthy up-and-coming band, so that's super sick. Of course, it's Thursday, so we have a bunch of things to give away and, of course, uh, some fun to have with you this morning. But before we get into all that, let me talk about this story that happened at the beginning of the week, and I wanted the dust settle. See, you know, a lot of times when uh, breaking news happens, uh, I've learned through mistakes in the past not to just jump right on it, right? Because right. Uh, because a lot of times the the surface-level story is only just a fraction of the reasoning and the truth, right? Mm-hmm. That's usually what happens. But I've like I want to start off with like a PSA about how like mushrooms, uh, when eaten in appropriate times and in appropriate places, can uh, ruin your life. And I'm not talking about portobello. I'm talking about the magic mushrooms. Okay. Well, portobello sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes <laughs> if you have a bad portobello. Oh yeah. Well, mushrooms are fantastic, and it, I'm talking about the portobellos now. Uh, but. <laughs> Uh, there, there was earlier this week uh, in, uh, a situation, a terrifying situation for most people who were uh, ever flew on an airplane before. Uh, essentially, they were on their way to the destination, and next thing you know, they hear the engines kind of turn off. There was an issue in the mm-hmm. cockpit, and uh, uh, essentially there was an emergency in the air. Somebody was trying to take down the airplane. There's about 84 passengers on board, right? So you got 84 people who are like, oh, my God, we're going to die, right? Mm-hmm. And freaking the F out. So what happened was there was a pilot who was off duty who was uh, on the jump seat, right? You know, like this is you – remember, you remember the movie Catch Me, Catch Me If You Can? Mm-hmm. Leonardo DiCaprio. The one that kind of just sits and watches. Yeah, so, well, yeah. basically every cockpit has an extra seat or two in the cockpit – uh, for other pilots who need to go to different destinations, it's just like a bonus seat. Right. You know, it's like you can ride along, and that's one of the perks it's of being a pilot. Beat. Yeah. And they call it the jump seat, right? So uh, there was uh, this dude, Joe, who's 44 years old. He wanted to go to a destination, uh, and I don't know why. It wasn't revealed why. Whether it was a business trip or something personal, he just wanted to go sure. and, and hop a ride. That's what he did. So they're like, yeah, absolutely, get in the jump seat. And let's ride. And so they're going on the flight. Everything seems fine. Next thing you know, Joe starts freaking out and then hits the kill button. There's a kill button that kills the engines of the airplane. And, of course, he knows where that is because he's a pilot. (laughs) Right? So he... He hits that. The, the pilots are freaking out. They have to restrain him. Yeah, and it's a whole situation. So they diverted the flight. They made an emergency landing. And the good news is everybody's safe. Now, the surface level of that story when it first broke was, okay, some maniac decided to take himself out along with everybody on the airplane. Mm-hmm. Worst case scenario, right? right. And in fact, that's like a hypothetical, like, you know, uh, when it's your time to go, what if it's, you know, someone else's time to go and he's the pilot and he wants to take us all down with him, right? right? You've heard that before. Oh, yeah. So Joe, you know, freaks out in the cockpit, hits the kill switch, gets restrained, and then gets detained. Once he's on the ground, they charge him with 83 counts of attempted murder. It's a lot. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, but why? Stupid games, stupid prizes. Right. Yeah. Well, the reason why this happened was because he was on mushrooms. He was tripping his ass off. Oh, man. Yeah. So all he basically, he just started having a bad trip. Now, Joe is married yeah. with two young kids, had a good career, got a beautiful wife. He's living a happy life. He wasn't by any means in a state of depression. 
Uh, he wasn't trying to ruin his life. He was trying to party, take a free, a free flight to another place, probably meet up with some friends. Yeah. And uh, he chose the wrong place at the wrong time to get high. And now that's affecting not only his career, he's done so, possibly his marriage, but his freedom for sure. You know, because 83 counts of attempted murder, I don't care if uh, the late, great Johnny Cochran's your lawyer, that's going to be hard to defend. The, uh, what is it, the claim the psychopath defense? Or yeah. the mental instability? Well, when, like, I'd have to look it up. I'm no legal expert, but is magic mushrooms a viable defense in a court of law? Like, nice. sorry, Your Honor, I was high off my ass. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. My bad. Yeah. On an airplane. Wouldn't that be great if the judge is like, ah, oh, yeah. yeah, I feel you, son. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Start talking about concerts they've been to. Yeah. They're like, how many grams did you eat? Oh, I ate an eighth. Oh, <laughs> damn, son. A All right. dose. Not guilty. This man was tripping his balls yeah. off. You know, I mean. It's in the fifth dimension. Yeah. So I guess the PSA is, you know, there are, if psilocybin i'm a fan of psilocybin and i understand the uh, the uh the the benefits uh you know emotionally uh, mentally of psilocybin uh, when done properly it's all about the the best kind of location so you know mm -hmm. i guess the psa that i'm going to start off with today is if you're going to get high you gotta do it in the right places man you gotta be camping in the woods around a campfire with some buddies maybe an acoustic guitar there you go yep that's a safe place uh where you don't want to be is in confined spaces with strangers Right. And you don't want to be anywhere close to any button. <laughs> that any one. technology, basically. Yeah. But any yeah. one single button that's like, oh, I know if I press that button, <laughs> yeah. we're going down. Oh, now it's in my head. I got to press that button. So don't press that button. Yeah. So uh, Joe, unfortunately, uh, is learning this lesson personally the hard way. But if there is a silver lining, he's teaching uh, everybody else out there who might partake and say, I want to join the Mile Super High Club right. to not do it. Right. So that's my recap of Joe, the pilot story. Uh, let's get right into our music. we got your morning more on coming up after skillet psycho in my head. Let's kick things off with some old school Pearl Jam. It's Jeremy. I'm rock one 2.1 KFMA, but you know the name of the show. Let's go. That was skillet with psycho in my head. It's now 617 and time for your morning moron. <laughs> <laughs> I will be irony. I know. I will. You know, it's my problem or my fault because I was doing like seven things at once. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So a speaking was the last thing I was able to conquer, <laughs> and I failed. Well, let's get into our morning moron story. Sometimes our morons will let authorities know that they're going to do something stupid before they do something stupid. And I'll give you an example. Fair warning. Okay. I will. The California Highway Patrol up. names a couple times. Except for the name Blind Channel, because we're very high on you guys right now. And good morning and welcome. We got Blind Channel in the building. Uh, I'll do a quick little rundown of everybody that I have here. Uh, we got Joel. We got, I'm just going to, yeah, they, all right. Um, raise your hand when your name is called. Yeah, raise your <laughs> hand when your name is called. All right, Joel, Nico, uh, and then we got Alexi or Alex. Uh, and then we got Tommy in the back. Uh, we got Ollie and Jonas. Uh, and that they make up. Uh, six members of Blind Channel who are currently on tour, opening up for The Who, just performed last night at Rialto Theater and killed it. Uh, it was what I'm hearing because uh, Weirdo was there last night. Uh, and we've been uh, digging your song. We got You basically popped up on our radar from uh, Electric Cowboy, right? Ooh, awesome. Uh, yeah, so we went to Electric Cowboy show, and then we were talking backstage, and uh, they started talking about you. Oh hey, my god! Yeah, cool. and so uh, we were like, "Oh, we got to check out this band." Okay, so we checked them out, and then absolutely, you guys are, uh, you know, part of a new breed, a breed that's really growing in popularity. It's uh, kind of like new metal coming back, but then with added showmanship that makes it super fun. You know, in a way, you're kind of like a hardcore boy band in the most respectful way, you know? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's a cool way to describe it. We call it violent pop music. Yeah. Violent pop music is the style. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. And, and well, that makes sense because, you know, as we we're getting ready, I noticed that you guys were all part of the big Eurovision uh, contest, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's a big deal. Uh, yeah. So it represents your country for, uh, you know, against all of Europe with a song. Uh, and that song, of course, blew up. I mean, being on Eurovision is a whole nother level as far as an artist, right? And you get your like song um, that was featured in Eurovision has like 70 million hits yeah. on Spotify. Yeah, yeah Dark Side is the song, yeah. 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 Now, when you uh, did Eurovision, um, I mean, you guys have been around for a while since like, what, like 2013? Yeah. Come like on a decade. 
Uh, so at what point were you at your career before you hit that main stage of Eurovision? Like what kind of rooms were you packing out before Eurovision? We were nobodies. We played like the small clubs in Finland. That was it. That was it. And after that, we blew up. So now we're in America, touring America, touring Europe, playing the main stages in Europe and hopefully in America soon. Oh, yeah. Well, I think you're making noise in America. So it's definitely coming. Yeah. So is that big of a deal, Eurovision? How long did it take you? Like how many submissions of songs did you submit into Eurovision to try to get to that main stage before you actually did? It was actually the first one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like it was the first first take. Like we had just released our third album back in the day and we had we were supposed to have our first like European tours and stuff like that. But then um then the COVID hit the world, the pandemic, yeah. and all of those tours got cancelled. And we were like, we have only one way to get our music to the people right now, and it's television and Eurovision is the biggest. So we submitted our song and then they called us that. Yeah, you guys are in. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So yeah. that's Joel from Blind Channel. That uh, we're live here on Rock One Two Point One KFMA. So did you guys look at each other, uh, like, and say, "Damn it, we should have done this like years ago." Well, uh, yeah, but everything has a meaning and a place and time. So you have to believe the the fate. And yeah. The- all that. And it's a tough competition. Like when you when you participate, you want to be ready. If you know what I'm saying, like yeah. yeah, we were lucky to have those like seven years behind us. We knew we had paid our dues, so yes. to say. Yeah. And yeah, so we were definitely ready for that competition and to make the most of it. Yeah, and tell our listeners on air again how you the best way you describe yourself. Violent pop music, exactly, yeah, and Backstreet it. Boys of the metal scene, <laughs> like you said, the hardcore boy band. Yeah, and hardcore boy band. Yeah, with choreographing. Do you guys? How long does it take you guys to choreograph like uh, your moves down to different dances and whatnot? We actually like back in the day where the Backstreet Boy choke started. Like we we are continuously in Finland. They call us the Backstreet Boys of the metal scene, and it started ten years ago when we booked this like rehearsal place for dancers like this uh, hall of mirrors you know and we practice choreographies because we wanted to add the showmanship to the new metal stuff we were making yes and then like people tried to mock us w- about it like they called us you're just like the backstreet boys and we were like hell yeah we are yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> well yeah but it is it's bringing the showmanship to the show you know and it's, for so long you know obviously uh, there's just musicians just standing there being jury delivering the songs and yeah that's that's a standard rock show but there is an evolution that's going on that's kind of like, you know, just a hybrid of both worlds. And you still got the the hardcore credibility of your songs and performance. And then you add performance on top of that to really get more bang for your buck. And I mean, like uh, when we mentioned Electric Callboy, who put us on your radar or yeah. vice versa, whatever, um, you know, there's a similar thing. There's a, a groundswell of of this style right uh yeah. you know combining the two and honestly uh i'm all for it i think people when they go out they want to have a great time and not only just hear the songs that they know and love but then you add that and now it's a party and it is just a straight up party we're just sweating the entire time yeah exactly like you you need to entertain like that's how we feel like we we feel like when people come to our shows we want them to like be entertained, enjoy themselves, and be talking about that show long after it's done. Yeah. yeah. Who's who's the best dancer in the band? Ooh, oh, that's I a tough one. We're, yeah. yeah, we're all pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, we're all pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, maybe Ollie, our bassist. Ollie, yeah. Ollie, yeah. We got a little bassist, got to have rhythm. You know, know. so all right, well, then who's the worst dancer in the band? Uh, probably me or Jonas. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, uh. And of course, oh, uh, like uh, Tommy's, you're on drums, so you're not dancing too much, huh? So the pressure's off. You feeling good about that? Yeah, his, yeah. Arms, oh, all yeah. The time. <laughs> his arms dancing. That's how I dance too. I can't necessarily move my feet, uh, but I can snap my fingers, I guess. Uh, so we're going to be going down the rabbit hole here with Blind Channel on the podcast broadcast. Check out their uh, wildly entertaining music videos, and we'll have more, including live performance, because I know you guys are geared up and ready. And I appreciate you uh, working late night at the Rialto Theater for a packed crowd uh, opening up for The Who and waking up early in the morning to hang out with us. So join sure. us, youtube.com slash vegan or keep it right here on Rock 1 2.1 KFMA. All right, so that was our FM side. Yeah. And so uh, let's pull up these music videos so we can see this on the stream. But before we do, actually, I want to show you um, this. And that's my ADD jumping all over the place because you guys are from Finland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Did you guys ever hear the conspiracy theory that Finland doesn't exist? I yeah. have, yeah. yeah. Okay, so <laughs> can you confirm for us that Finland does exist? No, we can't. No, we can't. No, we can't. 
I knew it. All we right. just fly somewhere, Bob. No one knows where. Yeah, I'll give you the example here. Um, this actually, this was like a TikTok or YouTube short that went viral. And, uh, you know, it has, that's the thing with conspiracy theories nowadays, right? If it's online, people, there are going to be a portion of people that uh, do believe it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm one of those people. I'll I'll believe every single conspiracy theory. Yeah, so. y'all honestly is the same. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, our guitars is the same. Yeah. <laughs> so and and I'll say this. I mean, I'm sure Finland is a beautiful country. I've never been. Uh, but if it didn't exist, this like fishing pond that Finland would be seem like it'd be pretty sick too. Uh, so here's the conspiracy theory in question. You're gonna be able to hear it on the stream as well. Uh, let's see. Can you see it? All right. It's going to be a little small, but we'll check this out. Where's my mute? Hold on. It's the country of Japan so that they can do free fishing in the area that Finland occupies, but it's just the ocean. Wait, wait, wait. Elaborate. What? So Japan wants to have a really good fishing spot that nobody knows about. So they created the guise of Finland. And Finland is not really there. It's just the ocean. You're talking about big fish? Big fish. Finland is the fishing spot? Like, yes. we got boats here? Yes. So, on maps, you'll see the country Finland. But if you yeah. really go there, it's not. It's just, there is no country to the east of Sweden. What about all the Finnish people? The Finnish people? They're really Swedish. Yeah, have you ever met anybody from Finland? Uh, I guess I haven't. No, have you? No, I haven't. <laughs> I know a Oh my god. Oh, yeah. 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 That's legit. And that's a lot of people commenting and liking on that. And I'm sure, but uh yeah, you guys are from Finland. So now we've met fin Finnish are, people. Yeah, are we though? Are we over though? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we, might, we might be a Swedish. Did you see that map though? Like if it, if Finland was just all one big like kind of ocean lake, it was just water. That's some yeah. good swimming or that's some good fishing right there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, guys, we need to drop a comment to that video. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we're here, we exist, and you come <laughs> check us out. Uh, so, uh, what's the music scene like, and where you're from? There's a lot of metal bands. A lot I of metal think, bands. Uh, yeah. If you talk about internationally, a lot of metal bands like him, Children of Bottom, Nightwish, they all come from Finland. So it's a metal country, totally. Nice. Yeah. A lot of metal bands. Well, you know, new metal has kind of made this huge comeback. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. part of it's the nostalgia act, and then there's all these uh, new bands, uh, metalcore bands and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, was it a trend that uh, was always been popular or when you guys were growing up? Like, it was super popular when we were growing up. Like, we were watching all these music videos on MTV, you know, Linkin Park, and yeah. Biscuit, all Corn, that stuff. All that. I, actually, uh, the name of our band comes from there because, like, we always, all of us shared a dream that one day we we're going to have a music video on MTV. But by the time we got the band together, um, it was only reality shows and stuff like that. <laughs> it, ha it had turned into a blind channel. And we were like, we took our name from there. Nice. Like, that was the inspiration for the name. That's beautiful. Yeah. And like when we started, we always like just Linkin Park is our, the, our favorite band. Yeah. And we always knew we wanted to make like similar kind of stuff, like new metal ish stuff. But it's funny because sometimes now, now that new metal is popping up again, people think we're a, a product of that, like new popping up. But the fact is that we've been making music like this for 10 years already. Yeah, like right. it was just what we wanted to do. Exactly. So, I mean, well, uh, and I was talking about it with Rico earlier. New metal was kind of thing where it was, it was in, right? And it was yeah. out, now it's in again kind of thing. And yeah. you guys were just like, you were there riding the wave. And now that you're just in the right time in the right place doing the right music. Be like, yeah, yeah. this is what we've always been. And now we just got a whole nother generation that are really all about it. Yeah, and yeah. it's good to see, you know. Yeah. Uh, when did you start rapping? Well, uh, you started <laughs> rapping when you were I was ra I was rapping like way before I met these guys. Like I used to be like, I had this. Um, rap posse uh, thing in, in back in Northern Finland where we're from. Uh, I was producing beats for rappers. I was hanging out with rappers, all that. And the guys had like rock bands. I always wanted to be in a band like Linkin Park. Yeah. But there wasn't really bands like that around. And then uh, if you look at our new music video for our newest single, Dead Zone, uh, we recreated how we met. Like there was this high school house party kind of thing. And me and my rap posse like arrived to the scene. And then we kind of met there. Somebody put on uh linking parks in the end i started rapping on top of it and the guys said that uh we're just like starting up this new band and we have our first rehearsal tomorrow we kind of need a rapper you want to come and try out or hang out or whatever and i said yeah and rest is history nice that is awesome you know what i'm about to actually play dead zone right now on the fm side so why don't we get you to introduce it 
Rock One 2.1 KFMA. Uh, we are back here live. Our single song takeover today is going to be a Blind Channel, which we're going to get a live in-studio performance from the boys in Blind Channel because they're hanging out here with us. Uh, but before we do, I'm about to play Dead Zone. We've been loving this song on KFMA, and I would like to give you the honors of introducing it. So if you would, uh, go ahead and take it away. If there's one Blind Channel song you need to hear right now, it is this one. Dead Zone by Blind Channel. Rock One 2.1 KFMA. I did the assist. You see that? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. All right. So, yeah, I got the video actually pulled up here on the stream. And it, the video looks like it was super fun to shoot. So it was, it, yeah. You guys basically like throw a full party as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a great, great party. We actually, we wanted to recreate that scene where the band got started. And we wanted, wanted to make it look like it's been filmed in America, but it was actually filmed in Germany. So... And actually, oh, Germany, yeah. yeah, the guys who filmed it is actually like the guitarist of Electric Cowboy. Yeah, Pascal. Oh, Pascal, yeah, nice, yeah. Pascal, yeah. Same team that made the Electric Cowboy videos, like all the big videos. It's the same thing, exact same team. Yeah, you know, yeah. honestly, that would be a great tour as well. You guys, if you yeah. link up and, and and they just did their first U.S. tours yeah. in yeah. like a decade and sold out every single venue, right? Yes, that's amazing. Yeah, and that is just where kind of where we're at. So it's, it's buzzing. There's a lot of like excitement behind the sound and and the party that you guys are, are doing so uh right place right time uh right vibe all the way around yeah uh, all right so we got i have a couple things right so i have all these beats for dates and we could do a live remix right now if you want to spit some bars on a beat and uh, you do cl <laughs> clean vocals too yeah yeah I so when did you learn you could sing uh, I was also like a pop singer back in the back in the day. It was less rapping and pop singing, not the rock stuff. Like at first, yeah. And then uh, when I joined the band, our, on our first album, I was mostly rapping. For the second album, like it was the guys who said that, dude, you can sing like this very like Justin Bieber kind of Ed Sheeran style, and we should add that to the mix. And also like that was also the time when I like I, w I wanted to like learn how to scream and do like those scream screamy stuff you know yeah only like this, here's the way i see it as a vocalist like uh i need to be able to pull off any kind of singing style that blind channel song needs we yeah. don't want to be we don't ever want to be like feel like this song should have a part like this but no one can sing it you know you know what i'm yeah. saying yeah. like i i'm a i'm a chameleon cuz like Joel has very indistinctive sound like you you know it's him yeah. so i'm more like the chameleon guy like i'm rapping or screaming or singing whatever the song needs i need to be able to do that like the swiss army knife uh vocalist yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I like I like that. Yeah, can yeah. I use that? Yeah, you can use that. <laughs> yeah. And then Joel, so you've been uh, singing singing uh, since you were in high school. You guys got all clicked up and and yeah. got together. Did you start as a screamer and then find out that you have range after that? Exactly. Yeah, uh, I wanted to kind of imitate that, bring the horizon wide. But yeah, Chester Bennington has been always a big big influence for me. And I just saw the Linkin Park played on the wall, and I was yeah. like, this is the place. And I took pictures out of that, and I'm actually heard that yeah, Chester is from. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona. So yep. we're gonna play there tonight, and that means a lot. And, and West Side, yeah. And Harvey Theory is 23 years old now, so everything clicks. Yeah, right nice. Well, Chester, of course, icon and Arizona kid uh, through and through, and always uh, like you know had a lot of love for his hometown and never forgot about it. And and played KFMA Day, our little festival that we've done here uh, several times over. So yes, awesome. yeah. There's a, there's a lot of history there, especially if you're a Lincoln Park fan. Uh, so that's fantastic. Well, let's let's do this. I'm gonna just get name one song on your catalog that you guys both go uh, back and forth with, and we want to do a live remix right now. I'm just gonna drop a beat, and we're gonna fit it to that. That's bad. Okay, our uh, our, our song from our catalog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of our songs, and you want us to like perform on top of the beat. Yes. <laughs> Maybe not that. Let's you see. should do dark side. Fits uh, the B. You should do dark oh, yeah. side, eh? Just hit the B. You think you can vibe with this? I can vibe with this. Yes. Okay. Live remix. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> and you want dark side on top of this? Yes. Yeah, go for it. Every psycho we in the scene here, someone follow me saying, Yes. Every psycho we in the scene here, someone follow me saying, just another night in my pitch black paradise Don't wanna cry so I gotta get baba My body is my weapon so I keep it loaded Till I'm all over the place and my head exploded Don't waste your prayers, they can't save us No 
It's lifestyles of the sick and dangerous. Hey, hey, put your middle fingers up, take a shot, throw it up, I don't stop. I'm, I'm, I'm living that life on the dark side. Just like the time of seven cup and shop, we don't wanna go up. I'm, I'm, I'm living that life on the dark side. Life on the dark side. There you go. Yeah. Oh, wow, that. That right yeah, so, so we, uh, way to rise to the challenge, you know. It's just like, yeah, remix. I oh, love yeah, it, that dude. Was dope. That's, that's that was good. better than the original. If, yeah. our, if, our, if our fans heard, if our fans heard this, you, they're gonna push you to release that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> we can snip it and throw it online for sure. It was, a, you know, and I, I, we we grab these beats from YouTube. There's so many like free beats out there from unsigned producers so we yeah. kind of joke around that you know we're working with like the hottest unsigned producers in the business right love now that. so love that yeah there you go uh fantastic job but we're gonna get ready to get back on the air talk a little bit more about uh, the latest album and the tour uh and how many dates are you in on this tour so far i think the, it's be 14 now it's, 14. La it's yeah. the last night yeah. yeah last night tonight tonight yeah, uh, in phoenix over. is your last, last and, night. Night. and then you're going back to finland yeah, yeah tomorrow. we fly back to Helsinki. Yeah. And then have you been to, uh, I mean, I know that you guys were up in Vegas just not too long ago, uh, but is this your first like full American tour in support uh, third. tour? Third, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so who have you toured with before? Uh, Lacuna Coil, I'm from Ashes to New. Yeah, oh, nice. yeah from Ashes to yeah. New was our first tour yeah. a year ago. Of think, one yeah. and a half years ago, yeah. yeah, in the beginning of 22. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And then are you getting a lot of people here in the States recognizing you from Eurovision? Not that much. No, it's yeah. mostly Octane and all of the rock radios that be playing. Well, and that's a good thing. Yeah, no, rock radio has been. Uh, you're really excited about you guys, uh, yeah, and awesome. so you've been hearing Vine Channel on radio stations and active rock stations all over the nation and on satellite radio. And they're currently on tour with the Who. Their last show for the tour is tonight up in Phoenix. I'm thinking Marquee Theater, probably right or something uh, like that, or Van I think Buren. It's Van Buren, yeah, yeah, Van yeah, Buren. Yeah, that's yeah. a sick venue. You're gonna enjoy that. Awesome. That's a good way to end. But yeah, yeah, I was asking them if they get recognized in the states from Eurovision, but of course. You know, we don't necessarily have Eurovision on our radar here in the States, but it is yeah. massive. It's back in Europe. It's massive. But right here, we're doing our own game. We need to play with the rules you have here. And that's a good thing because we want to be a solid rock band, not just a Eurovision band. Yeah, yes. no, this actually gives you a better opportunity to not have the stigma of yes. being in a pop band competition, which Eurovision is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Which is great. But it also it does add credibility that you are able to represent an entire country with the songwriting competition. And or, or yeah. an entire lake. Yeah, or, or an entire <laughs> lake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys do on your downtime in Finland? Do you fish? Do you do things like that? Or we go to sauna. Do you know what is sauna, that? Yeah. You go to the sauna. Room. Yeah, yeah. And just sweat. Yeah, and then yeah, hang yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, hang out. Uh. And this is your third time running through the states with the tour. Uh, yeah, what yeah. has been some of your favorite kind of like experiences you had here in the United States that you're a fan of? There are so many. Like where I, I think we like LA pretty much. We've been hanging out there a lot. We were there for three weeks writing songs for our upcoming album. Then also like Seattle has this strange yeah, kind of vibe we like. Yes. Seattle kind of, you know, it's cloudy and rainy, but it, yeah. it reminds us of home yeah. in, in a way. Yeah. Very so. green. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But yeah, Seattle is also beautiful. There's too many, like, uh, we love barbecue here in the southern state. Yeah, barbecue yeah. is awesome. Yeah. So that's food that you weren't used to having over in Europe. So the first time you had, like, barbecue was on tour? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, we, have, we have barbecue at home as well, but it's different here. Yeah, it's, it's totally yeah. different, yeah. yeah. What's Finnish barbecue like? Uh, so like, like uh, Alexa, this is your. Oh my God, <laughs> Alexa, yeah, is the Finnish, Alexa is the Finnish barbecue guy. Yeah, uh, it's like like roasted potatoes, probably some sausage, and uh, some like weird salad with like a lot of mayo. That's probably like Finnish barbecue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's, yeah. that's, that's like coleslaw. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, kind of like okay. coleslaw. Yeah, yeah, but made from like different. Oh, different yeah. ingredients yeah that's Finnish barbecue but i i prefer the like the we went to a barbecue place in texas and that was uh that was pretty sick yeah i mean if you're gonna get barbecue you gotta do texas yeah. if you're in arizona you gotta get some mexican food you know yeah, uh, yeah. mexican food is awesome as well uh awesome all right well let's keep this conversation moving we got the podcast broadcast going we want to get a live in studio performance we just did a live remix of dead zone that's exclusive on the podcast broadcast uh, to one of our uh, rap gpt beats uh which was fire 
It was hot fire. I think it's <laughs> the remix of the year for sure. Uh, but we'll get ready for the live in-studio performance from Blind Channel. Of course, uh, Dead Zone's the new single. We'll talk about the new album and more coming up next on Be Thinking Presents. So keep it right here. It's Rock 1 2.1 KFMA. All right. So, uh, yeah, let's get all set, uh, set up and situated for the live performance. So everybody else here on the stream, while we do that, I'll play you uh, an F My Life from earlier this morning. And we're going to be back with live cha- or Blind Channel performing live for us. Stick around. Awkward. It is awkward. Did you do something that got you fired from your job? I just get stupid. It's fun being stupid. Don't hide this in vain. Let us laugh at your pain. Call 600 KFMA right away. I promise we won't embarrass you. Because Beef Vegan presents F My Life. F My Life. F My Life. Yes, it's time for another edition of your F My Life. These are important situations. Email to me at beefvegan at kfma.com, subject line FML. But of course, if you have an F My Life, you can care to share on the air and give us a call right now at 600 kfma 600-5362 and weirdo rico and myself will weigh in on your f my life situation if we agree you're apt we'll give you up some tickets or something all right you guys ready yeah yes. all right here's our first first yeah, f my life email sent to me by jessica jessica said uh, monday was my first day with new contacts but i found out they were making my eyes red and itchy that was also the day i had a very important meeting and everyone thought I showed up stoned. <laughs> yeah. My life. What do you say, Rico? Yes, I deal with this a lot, actually. Oh, yeah? I wear contacts on every time. Are you high, man? Like, no, I just, my, uh, uh, never mind. Yeah, it's always opposite for me. They're like, do you have allergies? I'm like, no, man, I'm, I'm high. Stoned. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, weirdo, what do you say? Yes, it's right. just, just uncomfortable. Yeah, it is. And especially if you get in trouble or they, you know, they, 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 consider you and start pigeonholed you as like the stoner employee mm-hmm. right when you're not you're like, just getting all the random drug mm-hmm. tests yeah yeah ah, so definitely after your life all right uh next uh, next up my life email today while at wendy's with my boyfriend i realized he made more pleasure sounds when eating his baconator than he did with sleeping with me <laughs> <laughs> this is sent to me by yesi uh now is that mm-hmm. my life weirdo yes I'm so sorry that your boyfriend just does not make any sounds during sex. That sucks. All right. What do you say, Rico? Big baby. Yeah. Just just put bacon in the bedroom. Well, you know, I'm going to say big baby as well. And I'm going to let you guys know that, you know, yes, guys make sounds when they eat when something's really good and don't make sounds when they have sex. Just the way that we're wired. You know, if I'm eating the Baconator, yeah, it sounds like I am. And I'll look at it angrily and be like, you're a bad girl. Bad 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 Baconator. Yeah. So good. So good. I almost moaned reading that. So <laughs> I think it's normal. So big baby, we'll agree to disagree and move forward. All right. Next up, my life email today and for so quite some time, my girlfriend had been telling me that she needs to uh, go home each night to take care of her cat. Taking care of her cat is, it seems, a euphemism for getting it on with her neighbor Tom since her cat died three months ago. Aww. This is sent to me by not Tom. <laughs> All right, so F my life, Rico. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, horrible. Weirdo? Right. Uh, Yeah, F your life, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Her, her cat was definitely getting taken care of, Tom. Not Tom. Sorry. <laughs> All right, uh, next F my life. My mother asked me, asked my living girlfriend if she's had any problems with me peeing the bed. I haven't wet the bed since I was seven, and I hope to keep that secret to my grave. <laughs> Justin sent me this. Thank you for sharing that with me, Justin. Is that enough of my life? I've had moms. Uh, my mom tried to C block me like this, mm. right? You're bringing up old embarrassing things when I was like a toddler. It's like I'm a grown man now, mom. Stop talking about this. Uh, I mean, I am constantly like asking my boyfriend's mom and my husband's mom, like, you got to give me the down and dirty. I got to know all the embarrassing things because I find it hilarious oh, yeah. and endearing. Like, it wouldn't turn me off. I don't know. Yeah, what do you say, Rico? Yeah, it's F my life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does he still eat his boogers? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, Want to know his childhood nickname? Yeah. <laughs> he used to scratch his butt and sniff it. Does he still do that? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Now she's just staring at you the whole time, checking yep. the bed every morning, feeling, <laughs> making sure it's dry. Yeah, that's enough of my life. But uh, we'll agree, disagree, move forward. Here's our final of my life of the day. <laughs> All right. This said to me by Veronica. Veronica said, today my six-year-old granddaughter was sitting on my lap playing with my rings on my fingers. After a moment, she pointed to the gold ring with many jewels and said, when you die, can I have that one? <laughs> 
WTF. <laughs> All right, that's my life. What do you say, weirdo? God, I love children. <laughs> so great. Oh, demon spawn. Uh, no, it, the big baby makes it easier. Now you know who to give it to. Mm, okay. <laughs> I, if I was that grandparent, I'd be like, well, I'm making sure that you don't get this one <laughs> just so you don't get whacked. You got to let the kid know at an early right. age, like you're not in the will for getting this ring. So don't kill me. <laughs> All right? oh. Yeah. I mean, you're right off the bat. Yeah. What yep. do you say, Rico? I agree with your analysis there. Excellent. All right. So we'll say F your life. Thanks for that email. <laughs> Keep them coming. Beefing at KFMA.com. Let's hit the reset. We got more coming up right after this. All right, we are getting ready here. Um, this is going to be sick, but let me do a little audio test here before we yeah, do this. We're live. Yeah. Have this. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. I keep playing in the background there. Let's see what we got here. Oh, that sounds pretty good. You guys can hear pretty yeah, good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're good. Okay. Yeah, you can. Yeah, a bit louder. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then we got everything on this guy. Come on, guitars sound good. Yeah, yeah I, think, it sounds good, I yeah. think everything sounds good. Fuck yeah. Dude. I think so too. All right. Well then, hell, as we got everything set up, let's give it a proper introduction, and I think we got the we got this going here. Um, I'll make sure we're going to go solo cameras on stuff. Rico, are you in there backstage? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, all right. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Make sure I have all my cameras. Boom, boom, boom. And it sounds good there on your side? Good. All right. Well, then let's get right into this. Uh, all the way from Finland, touring the United States for the third time with a new single that's blowing up all over radio. We got Blind Channel, and we're going to do the acoustic version of Dead Zone? Yeah. Yes. Yes, let's do it then. All right, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is Blind Channel Dead Zone. Let's go. Living in a dead zone. Ooh. Yeah. I can still hear a heartbeat Faint, but now we're holding up the pin breathe Push, it's just a little too late Do not, do not resuscitate We keep kicking the can We keep beating the man We try to keep it alive Are we calling for it? We don't have any bars Should we follow the stars? Do you know where we are? Everything around is dying Tell me why we keep on trying Oh, oh Living in a death zone, oh, oh. living in a death zone. Open up my eyes, I wonder if it's for the last time. Oh, oh. living in a death zone, oh, oh. I don't wanna go on. Living in a death zone, oh. Clear, now we're following the flat line. Fear, once again we're in the dark side. Ray, but it's a little too light. Give up before you suffocate. We can't give up the ghost, we can't leave it alone. We dig it out of the ground. Evil never alone. Now the connection is lost, and the radio start. So do you know where we are? Everything around is dying. Tell me why we keep on trying. Oh, oh. Living in a death zone. Oh. Living in a death zone. Well, well, my eyes, I wonder if it's for the last time. Oh, oh. Living in a death zone. Oh, I don't want to go on. Living in a death zone. No sign alive. Yeah, yeah. No sign alive. Everything you understand. Tell me why we keep on trying. Everything around is dying. Tell me why we keep on trying. 
Caribbean. Oh, oh. I'm living in the dead zone. Oh, oh. I'm living in the dead zone. When I open up my eyes, I wonder if it's for the last time. Oh, oh. I'm living in the dead zone. Oh, oh. I don't wanna go on living in the dead zone. Living in a dead zone. Yeah, I don't wanna go on living in a dead zone. Yes, hey. you got yourself a live music from uh, the Spline Channel live in studio. That was Ooh. Dead Zone, the acoustic version. And we were doing this live on youtube.com slash be vegan and rock 102.1 KFMA. You guys sound fantastic live and stripped down to to be able to still bring the energy that you would have that like translates to record when you're fully amped up. And an acoustic version is a very difficult task. And many mm -hmm. bands fail at that. But you guys knocked it out of the park with this performance. And I can't wait to watch the replay. Uh, people are loving it on the stream as well. Uh, so the album, now you guys have been around for a minute, right? But just recently, I turned to cusp. And you're starting to see kind of the rewards of all your efforts and stuff. And I'm very excited uh, for you on that. Uh, the album that you just released is called? Uh, we're gonna release an album next spring. Dead Zone's gonna be on that album. The album is yeah. called Exit Emotions. Yeah. yeah, so you haven't even released it. How many albums or how many tracks are you gonna have on this album? There's 12 songs in total on the album. Yeah. How long have you been sitting on these songs? Uh, actually, not that long, not that long. Like, we wrote it kind of me touring, like, we were doing tours all we've been touring for two years right now. So, we had to kind of like find that week here and another week there to, yeah. uh, to record the album and to write the album. Yeah. But, like, the good thing about that is that. Uh, we've been approaching approaching this album, uh, the songwriting from a live perspective. Like, if you compare to our previous albums, in which we just wrote the songs, and then a couple of months later, after the release, we started like wondering how are we gonna pull these songs off live. Yeah. With this album already, like on the songwriting point, we were already thinking about the live shows. So there's gonna be like live bangers out there. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Have you tested these out too uh, for a live studio audience? You kind of just you know because it's difficult when. Well, I mean, hell, actually, when you're going on a support Port tour every one of these songs is usually debuted to new ears right yeah, yeah. Uh, so have you tested out some of the new music and see how fans reacted and how they move uh to these tracks or are you still kind of keeping them under wraps three songs released right yeah no no oh, happy doom step flatline and dead song nice so, yeah there's a lot more to come but yeah just like yesterday we played dead song like i think it's this is the first show where we play it so yeah, we see that everyone is like waving their hands and it's super good so so yeah we totally see that it's working for the people and i'm pretty sure the whole album will work super well and, and it does though it's like a dead zone's the type of track where you you do put your hands up and you kind of bob up yeah, and down yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah. like a, it's a banger that you bounce to you know uh and <clears throat> to do that in a kind of a, a metal core sense it, it's it's not that easy to get that kind of rhythm to get people really want to da dance and, yeah. and bounce around and so that's the mashup this hardcore pop act that is blind channel yeah and thank what was you. It, i mean say how you describe it again violent pop music violent pop music yes all right well we got it we want to do another live performance here since you guys are sounding so good we're just going to do this live on rock one 2.1 uh what's the name of the second song that you're going to do for us well, this is a wild card it's a wild card uh like i told before back in finland everybody kept calling us uh everybody keeps calling us the backstreet boys of the metal zine yes and we were like okay if that's what you want guys you ready Oh, yes. <laughs> All righty. Oh, are you ready? Yes, sir. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, do it! Oh! <clears throat> Let's go! Oh, my God, we're back again. Brothers, sisters, everybody say. Gonna bring the flavor, show you how. You got a question, boy, play the answer now. Am I original? Yeah. Am I the only one? Oh, yeah. yeah. Am I sexual? Hell yeah. Am I everything you need? You better rock your body now, everybody. Yeah, rock your body. Oh, yeah, everybody, rock your body right. 
back, streets back. All right. Now throw your hands up in the air ooh, 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 ooh. Wear them loud like you just don't care hey! If you want a party, let me hear you yeah! ooh, ooh, ooh. Cause we got it going on again Am I original? Yeah Am I the only one? Yeah Am I sexual? Yeah, and my everything you need to baby rock your body now, everybody. Yeah, rock your body. Yeah, everybody, rock your body right. All right, all right, all right. Back streets, back. All right. All right. Now everybody everywhere Don't be afraid, don't have no fear Gotta show the world, make them understand As long as there'll be music, we'll be coming back again Expect to hear a new metal version of Black, acoustic version of Backstreet Boys this morning, but you're welcome. My God, Blind Channel, everybody! Fantastic performance, better than the original. God, you guys are a hardcore. Uh, say it again for me again. A violent pop band. A violent pop band, and my favorite violent pop band at that. Keeping the conversation moving on the podcast broadcast. We'll wrap things up with Blind Channel right after this. It's Rock One Two Point One KFMA. Holy fuck, boys. That was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing. Jesus. Yeah, dude. Rico's back there just jamming. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a fucking banger. Song. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah it is. Song is crazy. I know, and obviously it yeah. wins people over, and that song is, you know, like at, at its peak as well. But to give that version, you literally made me want to just start ripping posters down around the wall. Like, yeah. fuck out! Like, <laughs> rage out. So that is yeah. fantastic, dude. And then you guys got a dance routine that goes along with that when you do that? Um, Have you done this song live yet? This no. song is like, we're probably going to do a cover of it at some point. You're going to have to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's a chance for that, but we're so busy right now, so we need to... Right now, we only have the acoustic version. Yeah, yeah. and there you guys might, are one of the first ones to hear it. cover of that. I fucking love it, and thank you for the that. The fans, they, they need it, so we need to kind of do it. They do need it, and it's, it is funny, and uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you guys got it. Uh, you got to figure it out. And I'm excited for you guys, uh, you know, this projection in this career, what you got going on here for the next couple of years, you're going to be very busy. And it seems like, you know, you're getting on a lot of people's radars and, uh, you know, you put in the time, you paid your dues, you know, and uh, it's hopefully all going to pay off for you. So, you know, uh, when you guys write, when um, you sit down there, you did this album, all live version, right? Like where you were thinking live in mind. Uh, so is a lot of these riffs kind of starting at like sound check, uh, and, and things like that, or, uh, how, how are you kind of structuring these songs now that were different than how you structured them before? Well, we usually start in like in the studio. Of course, someone has some idea they've had before, but we usually just we're in the studio. We sit down and somebody start like, starts jamming something. Mm -hmm. Like we have some, some songs to start like with riffs, but also like, uh, we love like big choruses, big pop choruses catchy choruses mm -hmm. so sometimes we like start from the chorus we have we want to have the hooks in there and then we start building this song around that and that's there, there's actually there's a lot of ways it's pretty chaotic when we hit the studio there's a lot of us yeah uh, on this album we also had some like uh, american producers songwriters yeah. with us like just wiping them we wrote like we wrote 50 songs 
50 songs and 12 of them made made it to the album. I love so, that though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did a lot of songs. So it's pretty chaotic when when we're an energetic group. So it can be overwhelming like to be there in the studio. But usually we make the most of it. Yeah, and your vocals, uh, you guys were all harmonizing on you know, not only this song, but in Dead Zone, there's a lot of backing vocals. You guys warm up before show uh, and do kind of like the quartet thing where we all like harmonize together. Some, sometimes we need to do that yeah. more, actually. Like, yeah, we're kind of lazy with that. Yeah. So it's just white wine and beer and all that. But... <laughs> That's the usual warm up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As you get older, you'll start doing uh, other more like actual stretching and Hopefully, yoga. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. what's your uh, drink of choice while you're on tour? Like if they, if you were going to have, uh, I mean, every band has a rider, right? So uh, give me your dream rider of what you would want backstage for your ultimate show to make it as comfortable as possible. Hmm. What uh, do you guys think? I think for me, it's only white wine. That's the well, Alex that's is, the Alex said wine. Mountain Dew. What about you guys? Mountain Dew. A big sofa. A big sofa that you can nap on? Yeah, yes. yeah that sounds great. <laughs> I, I, I want puppies. You want puppies? <laughs> Just play with puppies before you start going? Yeah. That's when you know you made it. When you show yeah. up backstage and after sound check, there's a crate full of puppies just waiting for you. Yeah. It's just ready to lick your face. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I want that. <laughs> well, you know what? Someday I think you're going to get those uh, those yeah. puppies. Yeah. Uh, you doing uh, festivals overseas? You know, they got you booked up in those uh, circuits yet? Yeah, there's a lot of festivals. Like last summer, we did a like, bunch of like big stages in Europe, like mm -hmm. Resurrection Festival, Download Festival, all that. So yeah, in Europe, it's already there. But in America, I think next year we're going to do some big festivals as well. Yeah. Does it feel good? I mean, I know that it's always a challenge for anyone that's a, a European band coming over here and, and reestablishing themselves, right? Uh, but you do feel kind of like that renewed energy and, and kind of feel like it's a clean slate. Uh, that you're you're kind of approaching this market and audience. Is there anything that you are doing differently to present yourself uh, this time around for America than you did when you were initially uh, introducing yourself to people in Finland and Europe before Eurovision? I think there's just more miles behind this. You know, we're more ready as a band, and yeah. we kind of yeah. we kind of know because it's music business is pretty similar no matter where you go. And like we we have like we're doing pretty well in Europe. And we we play the big stages, uh, so now we're more like prepared for everything what's to come. Cause no matter where you go, when when we came to we came to for, to the America for the first time uh, in the beginning of like 22, mm -hmm. and it felt it was kind of this amazing back to the roots thing. You're back on these smaller clubs playing the intimate shows, and it kind of it didn't feel bad at all. It felt amazing. It felt like this is why we started doing this. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like that felt that felt great. And now we kind of know that if the, that there if we just keep doing this over and over again, there there are bigger big things ahead in this market as well. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I agree. You know, absolutely. All right. Well, let's see this. We're going to go on the air here, uh, wrap things up with you guys. And as you get ready for your last show in America before you head back and hit the reset. And then are you uh, booked for another tour here in the States after that? We have a couple, a couple of plans. We have a couple of ones on the table. Let's see what we can pull off. But we want to be back here as soon as possible. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, nice. Oh, let's see. Hold on. We're back here live, Rock One Two Point One KFMA. Blind Channel has been our guest all morning long, and fantastic podcast broadcast that I can't wait for you guys to check out if you're working right now and have not watched along the stream. But pay attention to the YouTube channel; you're going to see all these videos, the cover of Backstreet Boys, uh, and of course, Dead Zone Acoustic, and even a remix of Dead Zone. I mean, you guys, you brought the A game, and I know that you guys go out there and when you perform, as you're been on this run with the Who. Uh, which I'm sure has been fantastic in every city that you've gone to. Uh, I mean, you're going out there uh, like cutthroat killers out there to steal the show, uh, you know, in a respectful way. But there's no way that you, people aren't leaving the Who show, not talking about Blind Channel. There's just no way. I mean, weirdo, get over here real quick. <laughs> I Now, again, we've been listening uh, to your music, but uh, Weirdo got to see you live in person uh, last night. And what was your takeaway from their live show that you love so much? I mean, you guys were like in your first song or two and I'm like grooving on it. And I'm like, man, this is like a metalcore boy band. And then oh, like yeah. immediately you guys did start talking about Backstreet Boys. But I mean, you guys brought a lot of energy and 
you know, Tucson can be weird sometimes with our crowds kind of at first when they're checking out a new band. But you guys, you had them a hook, line and sinker in that first song. Everybody was jumping and dancing. And and how did you guys feel like, you know, Tucson's energy was last night? It was super good. It was super good. And like what we love is uh, to play in front of like new audiences, audiences that ha don't know us yet. Because mm -hmm. the first time, like first, they're all just like st standing there all right. grumpy and like, what, what the fuck is this and <laughs> that stuff. And then uh, like we feel like it's our job to get them on our side, to make them our yeah. fans by the end of that 45 minutes that we're playing. And during during this tour, we've done that every night. And that's how you feel like the job well done. There's yeah. like, it's like this struggle, this challenge, challenge that we face. And we, lo we love doing like performing to audiences like that. Nice. And, and and who came up with the with the flatline choreography? That was that was fun. I think that I think it was you. Yeah, I, I did yeah. the choreography. Like Jonas, our guitarist said that we need to do some kind of dance dance to flatline. But I made the choreography. Like I yeah, made yeah. I made it. Like it's, it's, <laughs> it's super easy. That's yeah. how that's how bad we are at dancing. But no, you should have got the crowd in on it and had every because it's a pretty simple dance move that yeah, I was like is. even as like my boyfriend and I left, I was like doing it. And I was like, this is yeah, fun. Yeah. 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 Yeah, how do you do it? You go boom, boom, like, like one, four one, times two, to the chest. Three, four, five, and then you uh, flatline. Two, three, four, yeah. five. And then you flatline. Yeah, 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 yeah. You flatline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad what, you got it, buddy. Yeah, what if you uh, start like a dance trend in the clubs? If you go into a club and you see people dancing like that, like they would do the sprinkler of the cabbage yeah, patch when yeah, you freak yeah, out. Yeah. Do the flatline. Do the flatline. Yeah, do the flatline. <laughs> That's a, that would be fantastic. Also, uh, you know, uh, how mind blowing would it be that the Backstreet Boys eventually cover one of your songs? That will be awesome. That's a full circle moment. Like, yeah, I yeah, just kind of awesome. throw it out there in the universe. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Now yeah. you've been going on tour in support of bands, but if you were to go out on your own massive headlining tour here in America, which is inevitability, uh, who are you putting on your support? Who's uh, who's? I will bring up Lost Society from Finland. They're super awesome. They're our friends, and um, we want to support them a lot. And we want to bring sobriety? bands from Finland. Yeah. L Lost right. Society. That's Lost yeah. Society. Yeah. One of one of our very very good friends and an awesome band. Nice, yeah, and similar styles too. They kind of got the new metal vibe, or uh, there, there is a bit, bit of that new metal vibe. Maybe more. It's more like a bit more classic rock than maybe us, yeah, but, yeah. but it's super good music. Yeah, yeah super good band. Yeah, nice. And we Excellent. are really big, like Bad Omens, High Prevail. Yeah, yeah, awesome. those bands. Yeah, be awesome. Yeah, yeah we can get in those. Well, you know, I mean, I see all that stuff as the inevitable future for you guys for sure. Uh, so, I mean, I appreciate you guys waking up early and I knew, I know that's difficult. It's the hardest part of the job of being a rock star is uh, doing media in the morning, right? Yeah. yeah. Cause you, you ride high, you get the adrenaline rush from, you know, a rock in the crowds, but, uh, Tucson welcomes you and we can't wait to welcome you back. I hope you melt faces at the Van Buren in Phoenix tonight. And I know that you will. And uh, we wish you safe travels back to Finland and then also a speedy trip back to America so we can see yes. you all over again. We're going to be here uh, excitingly spinning Dead Zone, making sure everybody knows that track and anxiously looking forward to the next songs. And uh, don't be surprised if we throw in that cover of Backstreet Boys from time to time as well. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. We all Halloween, Halloween right around the corner, right? So we we do this uh, concept of bands doing cover songs is essentially like a band dressing up like another band. Yeah. So that was you guys for Halloween dressed up as the Backstreet Boys. That would be sick. <laughs> yeah. Be sick. Yeah. So, you know, it might make its way into the playlist just as soon as this Tuesday. So uh, awesome. I'm, I'm excited, dude. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank in. you so Thanks much for having us. Of course. See you around. Um, unfortunately, around. that's all the time that we have here on the podcast broadcast. Uh, but you guys, again, can watch the replay. YouTube.com slash beef vegan. Robin Nash is up next. Enjoy the rest of your day. Drive safe, ride safe and rock local. Later. When you wish. Thanks, guys. To be so welcome and end to all your grief. But if you've been mean or kind of bad, I will knock out all your teeth.